Now, your No Wait 41 NBC AccuWeather forecast. Good morning, Middle Georgia, and happy Thursday to you. I'm meteorologist Aaron Lowry, and well, we got mostly clear conditions in Macon right now. 41 Skyview is presented by the Piedmont Macon Medical Center. It's just hard to see them because, of course, it's still dark out. 70 degrees outside right now. The wind is calm, not much going on. Temperatures around the region are mainly in the low 70s right now. For Scythe and Sandersville at 68 degrees are the cool spots, while McRae at 74 is the warm spot to get things rolling on this Thursday. As you can see, we once again have that phantom ring around the radar to get things going. We're not seeing any rain right now. We got plenty coming starting later today, though. I'll be breaking all that down later in your full weather forecast. In high definition, this is 41 NBC News at Daybreak. Well, good morning, Middle Georgia, and once again, I'm meteorologist Aaron Lowry filling in for Chase Ambrose. Today It is Thursday, September the 8th. Thank you for watching 41 NBC News at Daybreak. Well, Memphis police have arrested a 19 year old for multiple shootings Wednesday afternoon. The suspect who police have identified as Ezekiel Kelly was seen driving around Memphis, shooting people and recording the shootings on social media sites. It has been reported that at least three people were shot and that two of them were killed. The shooting spree happening on the same day the suspect accused in the kidnapping and murder of a Memphis woman made a court appearance. The judge postponed the arraignment until today after the defense attorney filed a motion concerning legal representation. 34 year old Eliza Fletcher was out for a jog last week when police say surveillance video shows 38 year old Cleotha Henderson chasing her down and forcing her into his SUV. Fletcher's body was found four days later near a vacant home a few miles from where she was kidnapped. Police haven't said how she died. Well, seven years have gone by and one Macon Bibb family says they're still waiting for justice for the murder of their loved one. 41 NBC's Lisbeth Gutierrez spoke with the Smith family about their wait and why this case is taking so long. You don't know if you want to cry or smile, you know what I mean? That's the feeling Ricky Smith's family goes through every time they look back at these photos. They're the last photos taken of Ricky before he was murdered seven years ago. It's a moment Chiquita Smith says continues to hurt. It was heartbreaking. And then just to see, witness my daddy's life was like that. Somebody that's so full of life, joyful, helpful, you know, it was nothing that I could do. We reported Smith was shot by Donna Jackson on September 5th, 2015. At the time of the incident, Jackson claimed self-defense, but she was later charged with murder. Now, as the years go by, Ricky's sister, Gloria, says the family's frustrations are increasing. It shouldn't take seven years for anybody, and definitely waiting seven years and nobody call you and even say, hey, we haven't forgot about y'all. We got y'all. We never got a call. That's sad. We reached out to the district attorney's office to see where the case stands. They sent us this statement saying Jackson filed a plea of incompetency. The DA's office will hold a competency trial tentatively scheduled for October 4th. The family hopes this will finally get them the trial Ricky deserves. Of course, he's my brother and I'm going to always be my brother keeper. So. It don't stop here. Each year, the Smith family gathers to host a balloon release in his memory, and every get together is a celebration to remember the man he was. I refuse to let my data case just be silent. In Macon, Elizabeth Gutierrez, 41 NBC News. The Smith family says they'll keep fighting for Ricky until justice is served. They also hope to host a walk in his memory. Well, the woman wanted in connection with a shooting that injured a Macon toddler is now in custody. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says that 20-year-old Brianna Sneed turned herself in Tuesday night. She was wanted for aggravated assault. The charge follows a shooting on August 18th at a home on Danbury Drive. Deputies say that's when a three-year-old was struck by gunfire and taken to the hospital. Sneed is in the Bibb County Jail without bond. And a Macon teen is in custody, accused of stealing a truck at a store on Napier Avenue. 
Deputies say a 15 year old approached a man in his truck Tuesday night and made a gesture like he had a gun. He then ordered the driver out of the truck and drove off in the vehicle. While searching the area, deputies found the truck further down Napier Avenue and later found the teen hiding in a backyard on American Boulevard. He's charged with robbery by intimidation. Well, a new initiative dubbed Just Walk Away aims to curb gun violence in Macon. The initiative hit the streets Wednesday afternoon. 41 NBC's Cameron Branscombe has more. Uh, it is not acceptable to resolve conflict with guns. And not only is it not acceptable, but as a community, again, if we, if we see something, we should say something. The Just Walk Away initiative was started by Herbert Denard and the Changing Mindsets organization. As a part of the initiative, Convenience stores and barbershops are hanging posters to get people to take a second and think before acting. Um, but we really uh, appreciate everybody who's involved, from the district attorney to the average citizen on the street. Uh, because, quite honestly, it's going to take everybody working together as a team to, uh, to get this, this matter resolved. District Attorney Anita Howard says walking away should be the first option. There's phone calls, there's text messages, there's threats. And so whether it's at, you know, the, you know, whether it's at the Dollar General or whether it's at, uh, you know, a convenience store or whether it's in actual neighborhoods, um, wherever these individuals see each other, guns are being used and folks are ending up dead. Stewart says the initiative looks to reach the youth. So, uh, yeah, so we want to make sure that they are the ones who are definitely uh, affected and definitely uh, adhere to this initiative. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's mostly young folks who end up in body bags uh, across our city. Reporting in Macon. Cameron Branscombe, 41 NBC News. Changing Mindsets is holding a town hall meeting at Lizzie Chapel Baptist Church next Saturday. When Daybreak continues, later on in the show, a look at news from across the nation. And of course, I'm going to have your full weather forecast ahead of this rainy weekend. For weather updates on the go, download the 41NBC AccuWeather app and follow 41NBC on Facebook and Twitter. Inside Edition, weekdays at 2 on 41NBC. No one expects the worst to happen. Unfortunately, it sometimes does. In that moment, your life has changed. You're hurt. You're scared. And uncertain of what to do next. That's where we come in. As C. Felton trial lawyers, we understand injury law. If you were injured in a catastrophic accident or truck wreck, call C. Felton trial lawyers. We protect those injured most. We protect you. At Bonium Chevrolet, get oil changes for life, plus a 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty. Wait, did he say oil changes for life? That's right. At Bonium Chevrolet, you get oil changes for life, plus a great selection of new and used inventory and top dollar for your trade, some of the highest trade values in decades. And did we mention you get oil changes for life? Come raise your standards at Volium Chevrolet, just off I-75, exit 187 in Forsyth, and visit VolumeChevrolet.com. Magnolia Manor is excited to invite you to our annual John R. Batts Memorial Golf Classic. This tournament is held each year at one of Georgia's oldest and finest facilities, the Idle Hour Country Club. Meet your friends for a challenging round of golf and stick around for prizes and lunch to follow. Proceeds from the tournament will benefit our campus safety initiative. To register or become a sponsor, call Kendall Stevens at 229-931-5928 or visit magnoliamanor.com slash fundraising events. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home the Kubota VX Series for zero down, 0% zero APR for 60 months, plus save up to $700. Find a Kubota dealer near you at GoKubota.com. Hello, my name is Dr. Tiffany Scandrett, and I've had the pleasure of partnering with the Make and Biv Economic Opportunity Council Incorporated. This has been your local community action agency since 1965. You may be familiar with the local Head Start programs or even the energy assistance, but there are so many other programs that give people a hand up. Mrs. Sarita Hill and her amazing team are looking forward to serving you and your family soon. Helping people, changing lives, building families. 
Now, your 41 NBC AccuWeather forecast, presented by Volume Chevrolet. Welcome back on this Thursday morning, Middle Georgia again. Not too many clouds out there as we get things rolling, but we'll see plenty more later on today. 72 degrees currently in Dublin. The wind is calm. Another typical summer morning. You can see some of the clouds here kind of obscured by this phantom radar mess. We're not seeing any showers right now, uh, but we most certainly will have plenty of rain chances later on as we head into the afternoon. So maybe a couple showers further off to the south there along the I-75 corridor. It looks to be along the uh, Valdosta area, but really a calm morning for us here in the Peach State before things get a little messier as we go through today and into the weekend. It will be cooler today though as cloud cover thickens throughout the afternoon. Shouldn't see any 90s. We're mainly going to be in the mid 80s with Forsyth the 82 being our cool spot. You got McCray and Abbeville up to 86, Macon, Warner Robins both up to about 85. So a warm afternoon, not too hot by any means. Might be a bit sticky as that humidity climbs later on today. So as we go throughout the first half of the day, we should get a healthy dose of sun and then we'll get more of that cloud cover to fill in once we head later into the afternoon. And so we're going to start off as just a few isolated showers, but they will begin to pick up more and likely have thunder activity as we head through the later afternoon and evening hours. And so if you got plans later on outdoors, I definitely recommend the umbrella. It's not a guarantee that everyone's going to see rain, but a decent portion of us should. And it'll last into the overnight hours might get a decent dose before midnight and then some shower activity likely heading into tomorrow morning. You're definitely going to want that rain gear out the door tomorrow. While we may not be waking up to the rain today, we very likely will to begin our Friday with heavy rain taking over as we head later into the afternoon and the evening. It's looking pretty messy tomorrow. and We're going to get a decent amount of the flash flooding threat not looking quite as bad as it was, so that's good news, but we're still expecting the vast majority of the region to get about an inch or so of rain. Then we head into Saturday and things are still looking pretty messy. I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is a large underestimate of what's going to happen Saturday. Models are still disagreeing. The American thinks it's going to be like this where we get a couple showers, but the Europeans think it's going to be widespread thunderstorms that almost everybody sees. So we're still waiting to see how that sorts itself out as we get into the weekend. But more often than not, that European model uh, tends to get a pretty good grip on what's going on. Uh, the overnight lows for tonight should be a little cooler. Uh, similar to what we're waking up to today, though, it will obviously be more humid as that rain is taking over. I think most of us, if not all of us, are going to bottom out right about 70 to 71. In just 10 seconds, I'm going to have your seven-day forecast. At Volume Chevrolet, get oil changes for life, plus a 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty. Visit Volume Chevrolet, I-75, exit 187 in Forsyth. That's VolumeChevrolet.com. Your 41 NBC AccuWeather 7-day forecast is presented by Volume Chevrolet. As you can see, temperatures are going to get a little bit cooler as we get ready to head into the weekend with those storm chances rising. Right now, looking like tomorrow is our best chance. But again, Saturday, leaning more towards that European mall. That's why I got us at 70%. And then, luckily, our storm chances dropping a bit for Sunday and Monday. And the sunshine should be back for us come Tuesday. We may never have an understanding of that motivation. The second suspect in a Canadian stabbing spree is dead. Police say a tip led to the arrest of Miles Sanderson here in Saskatchewan yesterday afternoon. They say he was alone in a stolen white truck with a knife. Shortly after his arrest, he went into medical distress. He was pronounced deceased at the hospital. Police did not reveal a cause of death, but said they provided medical care on the scene. Officials say he and his brother Damien Sanderson were suspected of killing these 10 people Sunday and injuring 18 others. Most of the victims are from the indigenous community of the James Smith Cree Nation. We're hurting. We're broken, but we're not defeated. This man says his sister, Bonnie Burns, died while trying to protect others. One of her sons was killed in the same attack. Her 13-year-old son was stabbed in the neck but survived. She's not a victim. She's a hero. 
Police found Damian Sanderson's body Monday and say his wounds did not seem self-inflicted. With both suspects dead, officials say no threat to the public remains. I hope that this brings them some sense of closure in that they can rest easy tonight knowing that Miles Sanderson is no longer a threat to them. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Well, don't go away because after the break, it's time for a look at entertainment and the sixth and final season of one of TV's top legal dramas. Get news anytime on 41NBC.com and the 41NBC News app. 41NBC, clear, accurate, to the point. Weather brought to you by Volume Chevrolet and Versailles. Exit 187 off I-75. Unfortunately, I cracked my screen. And it's not powering or functioning on at all. Not at all. Do you have any iPhone 13 phone cases? Absolutely. Give us about an hour. We'll have this all fixed up for you. OK. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Have a great day. I've got a huge announcement. I'm returning to the game of trivia. Rival schools in the ultimate quiz show. Cub, you're an avid reader. Of books? No. Bless your heart. Capital One College Bowl premieres Friday on NBC. Transform your home and upgrade your curb appeal with new Champion Siding. Right now, save 30% off your siding project. At Champion, we make the process easy. We help you choose the best design options for your home. Our install team manages your project every step of the way. And it's all backed by our lifetime guarantee. Save 30% off new siding for a beautiful look that lasts a lifetime. Call now for your free estimate or learn more at championsighting.com. Champion. I got hurt by a big truck. Why did I call the Ken Nugent Law Firm? Because life-changing injuries deserve life-changing money. We got a client who suffered a brain injury in a wreck with a big truck, two and a half million dollars. Another client of ours needed multiple back surgeries and we got them $4.7 million. My job is to maximize the value of your big truck case. One call, that's, that's all. all. Call 1-800-CALL-KEN. GMFS Mortgage started over 23 years ago. Since then, we've grown to over 300 employees. We've helped over 140,000 customers. Purchase, build, renovate, or refinance. Over $20 billion in loans. We make the mortgage process easy and convenient. Apply online or at our local Macon office. If you're looking to buy, build, renovate, or refinance, go to gmfsmortgage.com to see how we can help change your life today. GMFS, change your life. Welcome back. The Good Fight began as a spin-off show from The Good Wife and quickly became a standalone series with its own take on legal dramas. The sixth and final season of the show is here with some new characters to spice things up. David Daniel has a preview. I used to believe in progress. That we learned from our mistakes. Like I'm back where I was six years ago. The Good Fight star Christine Baranski says she's reluctant to say goodbye to Diane Lockhart. Given everything and, and seeing how the season played out and how it was written, I can understand ending the journey. I, I have this weird feeling of deja vu. What do you mean, unpacking your stuff? Well, we've done this before. What do you mean, unpacking your stuff? Thank you. The deja vu is because there seems to be this cycle to the politics. She's someone who believes the arc of history tends towards justice. But then what she's finding with Roe v. Wade and with some other issues, there seems a constant return. Look at the ethics of all this. Standing next to each other at a bar talking, I think we're all right. <laughs> John Slattery calls joining the cast an easy decision. The idea of playing a, a shrink who gives people ketamine trips basically seemed interesting and potentially funny and weird. And it shoots in New York. 
and the Kings are great writers, and, and it's Christine Baranski, so what am I, an idiot? We plan to kick ass in your name. Andre Brower says he talked with stars Baranski and Audra McDonald before taking his role. Then I watched parts of season four and all of season five, and that just convinced me that I was dealing with really great material, you know, really good people, um, forward-thinking artists um, who had uh, developed a really good show. And so I wanted to be part of it. These were thoughtful shows. These were intellectual in nature. They they took on what was going on in the world. The yes! In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now, your 41 NBC AccuWeather forecast, presented by Volume Chevrolet. 41 Skyview Infosight is presented by Volume Chevrolet. We're beginning to see those very, very faint hints of the sunrise. At we don't have too many clouds out there to kick things off for us right now. So as you can see, 68 degrees, one of our cooler spots to get things rolling with a five mile per hour wind coming in out of the north northeast. We've been following this chain of fronts throughout this week and now we're kind of on the backside and you'd think that's when things are clearing up, but it's the opposite. We're actually just getting started. This stationary front is going to strengthen and fuel storm chances later on for us as we head into the afternoon. We've got this goal Gulf low pressure system making its way inland later as we head into our Friday. That's going to bring in a number of storm chances. Atlanta looking really soppy tomorrow too. It doesn't get better heading north, so uh, that's not going to be a way to escape it. Georgia in itself is the state that is, looks to be getting hit the hardest by this system, and we are likely to get another potential round on Saturday again. So kind of split on where the models are with what to expect Saturday. I'm kind of going to walk you through that here in just a second. Uh, but I'm leaning a little more aggressive than what this is showing here. I do think we got some decent rain chances. First, let's go through the high resolution rapid refresh model. This one not going nearly as aggressive with today's rain chances, which I disagree with. I think we're going to have more of those scattered storms in the afternoon, though it gets more aggressive as we head into tonight and then into tomorrow morning. Now, this one is pretty aggressive as we head late into tomorrow, but I think we're going to see a lot of that rain move in earlier, which is why I'm saying have that rain gear ready to go in the morning. I think we're going to wake up to some of that activity and then that mess comes in as we head later into the day. And you see that's pretty widespread for us heading into our Friday night and things don't necessarily get better as we head into Saturday. So let's go through this. The European model is probably the most aggressive one with this pattern right now. We're not expecting too much as we go through the day today, but take a look at those numbers and how they jump as we go through tomorrow. Already pushing an inch and a half in some of our wettest spots. And then you add in Saturday. This is the big question mark is how much is going to end up happening outside. These numbers are big time aggressive right here. This is a flash flooding threat. But now as we shift forward to what the American model is showing, you're going to see not nearly as aggressive. The American going way harder with today's rain chances. And then we go through tomorrow. They're still pretty on par, the American and the European at this point. But once you go through Saturday, you really don't see those numbers jump as much. We still get a couple of locally heavy spots, but it's just not being quite as aggressive. But again, I'm leaning more more towards what I showed you before, even if those numbers aren't quite that high. So a lot of rain coming in the next few days. The good news is during that time frame, we don't need to worry about the tropics. Invest 95L may develop into a, a depression, but it's still too far off right now to be an immediate concern. Good Thursday morning to you. I'm Shah Sparani. After the Perry Panthers fell in a one-point heartbreaker to Housing County in their season opener, Perry bounced back and dominated Jones County 42-14 last week. With the Greyhounds being ranked third in 5A in the state, the Panthers were awarded the Georgia High School Football Daily's State Team of the Week Award. Since 1959, the Panthers have won two region titles, both under head coach Kevin Smith in 2020 and 2021. So after being at the helm for now his sixth season, Coach Smith feels honored for the recognition. Uh, it gives me chill bumps. You know, uh, you work countless, countless hours, you do countless things, and sometimes you feel like you, you're spinning in quicksand. And then all of a sudden you start getting some of that fruit. You know, we, we talk about all the time, watering the root and, and, and playing the next play, playing the next play. We're going to get to some fruit. And, uh, you know, we're starting to reap a little bit of the, uh, getting some of that fruit now, and it's a very, very uh, humbling feeling. 
Oh yeah, that fruit will definitely be tasty for the Panthers. They continue their quest for a third consecutive region title as they take on veterans tomorrow in an in-county battle. Now to our end zone game of the week, which features the Peach County Trojans hosting the Jones County Greyhounds. The Trojans were featured in our week one game of the week matchup where they dominated Baldwin 50 to 20 and had a great showing through the passing game. But in week two, they fell to Northside Eagles 35 to seven. When asked what the team can improve on this week, head coach Chad Campbell didn't hesitate to say everything. Seniors got to take a, a bigger leadership role and do uh, do their job, and uh, everybody's got to be accountable for you know what they do each and every day, not just on Friday night, but you know Monday through Thursday. So um, you know it's just a, it's a process. We've got a long season to go. Our end zone game of the week is scheduled for tomorrow at 8 p.m. at Trojan Field. We'll have live pregame coverage at 5, 5:30, and 6, with highlights and scores from several games on the end zone at 11 p.m. Going into last night's battle against the Oakland Athletics, the Braves set tied with the New York Mets for the NL East lead. So let's see if the Braves can capitalize on that. Spencer Strider started for the Braves in bottom of the first. Steven Vogue hits a double off of the left field part of the wall as a runner from second scores. And the A's added one more run in the frame as they went up to nothing early. Then top of the fifth, Von Grissom smacks a two run home run to right field as that would tie the game at two. But top of the six, Dansby Swanson follows up with a solo bomb of himself as he hits a shot to left field as that breaks the tie and the Braves go up three to two. And then we head to the top of the seventh where majority of the damage takes place. With two runners on and one out, Marcel Ozuna lines a single to left as Grissom turns on the burners and makes it home. And then the next batter up, Robbie Grossman nails a double to right field as that gets both runners home. And that would put away the game as the Braves go on to win 7-3. Braves have an off day before beginning a three-game road series against the Seattle Mariners tomorrow. That's it for your sports. Have a terrific Thursday.